these are some of the many simulation tools that we use and support here at PMC. And today's presentation will concentrate on Simulate. Now here are some of the industries and companies, among many others, in which Simulate, and indeed simulation in general, has been used. So you see that simulation has very broad application. Historically, its major areas of application were first in manufacturing and has since extended into other industries, in particular healthcare. Here are some healthcare organizations that have used sim simulation, including hospitals, clinics, and so forth. And even more broadly, simulation has been used in all of these industries. So practically, no matter what you do, in the sense of process, simulation can help you study a process. Best of all, even before it's built and operational, to work out the kinks on the computer rather than making extensive adjustments to a process later on. Now, here's how simulation in general works. These comments apply irrespective of the simulation software. You have a real system, either planned or operational. The modeler builds a computer model using specialized software of this system, and then leaving the actual system undisturbed, conducts experiments with the model to assess its performance. And that performance can refer to performance metrics like time and system, work in process, queue length, utilization of expensive machines, and so forth. And proposed improvements to the system that might or might not work can be tried out by altering the model. That's a lot less expensive and a lot less disruptive than trying them out on the real system to see what happens. The simulation model drives the system through time and takes advantage of statistical methods and you also get built concurrently with the model at essentially zero incremental effort, you get an animation of the system running through time. So simulation doesn't just provide a snapshot, it provides a movie. And that can help visualize the effect of system design and proposed improvements. So there's powerful reasons to simulate. It can be a lot quicker to try a lot of alternatives and compare their relative merits on the computer. It's a lot easier, quicker, less disruptive, and far less expensive to make mistakes in system design on the computer rather than in the real system. And approaching the bottom line, simulation directly impacts it positively by doing all of these things and many more. And these things like increased throughput, that could be increased throughput in a factory, a warehouse, a hotel reception desk, an emergency clinic, an airport, whatever it might be. So simulation, as mentioned before, has very broad applicability. Now, one of the first things the client or the user of simulation, along with the modeler or systems analyst, has to decide is how much to study in detail, that's the system you model with the computer software, and how much is external environment. Now, I've been doing simulation for 35 years now. You can't see it over the microphone, but I'm very old and wrinkled. And I would urgently advise, based on those 35 years of experience, that in general, 
and particularly, particularly if you or your colleagues or your company are approaching simulation as a technology for the first time, begin small. Begin with a small success that can be achieved quickly and can convince you and your management of the value of simulation. Don't begin your first project with a great big one that may take a longer time to show some results. So, for example, you might simulate only one part of the warehouse, not the whole warehouse, or only one assembly line in the factory, not the whole factory or only one work cell, or only one part of the hotel, like the reception desk, or only one concourse of the airport. Those would be examples of beginning with a small scope. Now, here at PMC, we build simulation models at different level of detail. And what that level of detail is, is strongly dependent on exactly what the client wants to find out. And you see different levels on this slide. So before we even turn the computer on and open up any software, we have nice, long, detailed shop talks where the client does the talking and we do the listening so that we have a full understanding of exactly what the client wants to achieve. And here is a nine-step methodology of simulation. You begin here at 3 o'clock on this circle, go through these steps, and you end up with some very valuable results. On the top half of the circle, Time and money are being invested in the project. On the bottom half of the circle, you're getting valuable returns. You're experimenting with alternatives, looking at them comparatively, finding out what's best in an economic sense, and implementing those results in your real system. And subject of another webinar, Wow, look how big that slice is. We drew it big on purpose, and uh, another of our webinars goes into detail on this big hunk and this big hunk, the input and the output. So those are webinars for another day. Meanwhile, what I've said so far has pertained to any type of simulation of a process, irrespective of the software in use. Now let's look at simulate, the topic of today, a particular one of many very worthy software tools, in more detail. And in simulate, work items, as they're called, moves through the system. They go through various processes which in Simulate would be called work centers. So they come in through work entry points. So a work entry point, think back to the previous slide where we had the model as a circle within the overall environment. A work entry point says parts enter the system being modeled from exterior the system. And these are some of the properties a part can have. And these work items, they may represent customers, orders, parts in a factory, airplanes in an airport. That's one of the virtues of simulation. It's versatility. And they flow through, as Simulate calls them, the work centers. Going back one, these processes would be work centers. And then they will exit the system. The work center is typically a value-added process. 
so that anything a work item needs to spend time somewhere while it receives some service. That's another way of looking at this last bullet point. Presumably a value-added service can be modeled in Simulate. And unfortunate topics like downtime and changeovers that represent non-value-added time can be modeled to assess their input. A work center like a machine may, meet, may need a laborer or mechanic to repair it. That would be called a resource. Or a work center may need supplemental help from a particular piece of equipment. And that could also be modeled as a resource. And these are where people or things wait for service. The gate area at an airport would be a storage bin. The waiting room at a doctor's office would be a storage bin. A buffer within an assembly line would be a storage bin. And simulate lets you specify these important properties of a storage bin. And as mentioned, work then exits the system being modeled and returns to the overall environment via a work exit point. And there's various other tools. In particular, in addition to the resources that can help out at work centers, Simulate supports conveyors for material handling. So here is a screenshot. The upper screenshot is a little tiny segment of part of the animation that would be built. And from the models running, parts come in. They come in here. This gets read higher up if the storage area is getting full. This shows a one and a different color when the work center is busy or a different color when the work center is down. Then there's another storage area. Well, you want enough storage areas so that you don't have big blockages upstream from machines that are down. But storage areas cost money and take up space. So there's a trade-off. And simulation is an excellent way of assessing that trade-off. The bottom half of this slide shows a couple little illustrations, a, an analyst building a model in Simulate would work with these screens to specify the detail of model logic. And there's a great deal of power here for modeling different types of processes. So a very small model, almost the smallest possible, would look like this. PMC offers training seminars in Simulate and other softwares for those needing it. And this would be one of the first models that the seminar leader and the engineers learning the software would explore in learning how to use Simulate and use its full power. Now suppose the cycle time here, as one example, is not constant. Well, in real life, it probably isn't. How should that cycle time be represented in the simulation model? Perhaps with a gamma distribution, a log normal distribution, an Erlang distribution. Well, simulate is bundled with software that will take observed data and recommend a statistical distribution like log normal, for example, on this slide, that represents a good fit for the input data that was put into it. And it may be that there is no closed form distribution that is a good fit. And then Simulate is capable of using random sampling from the observed data directly. So use of this auxiliary, auxiliary software 
is a valuable adjunct to help the model be a statistically true and valid representation of the real system. Now here's an example case study. This is a screenshot of an actual model that we built for client X out of the automotive industry and you can see a great deal of value was produced by this model. Statistics like for various possible configurations, what was the work in process, how full were each of the buffers, how many parts were on each conveyor, where were the bottlenecks, how thoroughly utilized were each of the machines, what were the key statistic here is JPH, jobs per hour, very important in many manufacturing industries. So indeed the client obtained six figure savings out of this, might even have been seven, but certainly six figure savings and cost avoidances out of this model. Now this would probably not be your first model. You'd start with a smaller, less complex one and build up gradually. But this gives you an idea of something you can aspire to. And rest assured, if you're thinking of a hospital emergency room or an airport or a warehouse or the operations of a large hotel and conference center, you're equally welcome to step right up and get the same value from your simulation projects. Mm -hmm.